I don't think I'm going to be continuing on with Magic the Gathering pickups right now just because we kind of had a little setback in the family. I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. But today, I wanted to go over some rec recent acquisitions documenting, you know, uh, what I'm adding to the collection over here. I opened this already. I tried to shoot a video for this, and again, I used a really crappy camera, so I robbed you of the experience of opening the packaging. It came in a package like this from... This is a private group on Facebook, actually. Uh, they specialize in what are called artist proofs. Artist proofs are essentially Magic the Gathering. I don't know if you call them prototypes or the artist will look at them, see if there's any issues with, you know, shrinking it down, putting it in the card. And I think nowadays these just became uh, compensatory. I guess you could say like the artists usually just sell these off now to make a little bit of extra money. Not a lot of people like to collect these types of cards mainly, I think, because you can see in the back, they don't have the official Magic the Gathering back. Here's a here's a example of a card there, right? This is a legal standard gameplay card. You can play this card in any Magic the Gathering official game. But these cards are technically not considered uh, gameable cards. <laughs> you can't play with these cards. But what I like about these cards is that they actually come directly from the artist. And in a way, I am supporting the artist. One of the things about Magic the Gathering that I really do appreciate is the art. To me, that's like the resounding uh, differentiation of Magic to anything else out there that's a trading card game is the art. So anyways, in the private Facebook group, uh, they had a bunch of uh, Dan Frazier artist proofs and for people who are in the know he's a pretty prominent artist in Magic the Gathering really popular from the early days of Magic his art I think to me is a definitive of those days this is all from one dealer on the page he goes by Mark uh, I don't know if he wants me to say his whole name or not but this card I picked up because I just wanted to you know pad uh, the pickups this card is only this card is only like five bucks I think indicative of all the artist proofs artists if it comes directly from them will sign the card and if you go up to them at like a Magic the Gathering tournament or what have you and you ask them to sign an artist proof, they necessarily won't sign it. Because this has kind of become a uh, type of certificate of authenticity, a signature of authenticity you could say. Where if somebody comes up to an artist at a convention with an artist proof, right, without the back of the card, it's a lot easier to fake these cards. And to not contribute to that market, a lot of artists just opting not to sign uh you know, artist proofs that don't come out of their hand. So nowadays you can pretty much rest assured that every Magic the Gathering card you get from an artist will come with a signature. And a lot easier to counterfeit, and in Magic the Gathering, counterfeiting is very rampant, especially in uh, for really expensive cards. This card really sucks. Great shot, Catapult. Now this card I actually wanted to get. This was a little bit more pricier on the price list. Mahat Mahdi Dijin. I guess by today's standards, this, you know, 5-6 flying blue creature is pretty... Vanilla, nothing crazy, but back then this was a rare. And I think back then this was really a, uh, a beater type card, where today this is really, this ability is just tame. Like, this would not be a rare by today's standards. Today's Magic the Gathering cards are just too powerful for us old timers, I think. Caveat, I'm not, this is not my era of Magic the Gathering, but I appreciate this uh, era so much that I wanted to pick these cards up. Uh, Apprentice Wizard. It's actually my second favorite apprentice. My first favorite apprentice is Apprentice Necromancer. I got this card because I really do love the art of it. <laughs> Just this, I don't know, perplexed wizard looking at his staff, like trying to figure out how do I use this thing. Again, Dan Fraser sign on the front. A lot of the time, an artist will draw like a sketch on the back of these cards, and to me, that is very, very interesting, very desirable for me to do. One of my goals in Magic the Gathering is to get an original Magic the Gathering art piece. But I guess the next best thing removed from that would be just to get something directly from the artist's hand. Artists will do like a sketch and that's basically the cheapest way to get, I guess, an art piece from a Magic the Gathering artist. But they go crazy with the art they put on the back of this. You can ask them to do like watercolors. You can ask them to do like, I know it's like a really small space, but they do full out paintings. On the back of these things and some of these paintings are just miraculous i'll see if i can find some pictures and post them here on the on the video beautiful beautiful card this card Whew, i appreciated this card more 
after I got it in person and looking at it on the computer screen. If I can get into focus there. Uh, Hyperion Blacksmith. For some reason when I look at this card, I'm reminded of a show I watched as a kid. Rocket, Robin Hood, and that Hercules show where Hercules puts on like the ring. You know, here's that little, uh, what do you call those creatures? Come on, Herc, come on, Herc. I don't know. Comment below if you know what I'm talking about. I'm just dating myself. Okay, quick addendum to this video. Uh, after I was done shooting uh, this video the next morning, I went to the mailbox and I got this package here. Fragile. Handle with care. And again, it's another Magic the Gathering card. Same person uh, I was talking about in the video. Um, I was talking about in the video uh, dipping my toe into the artist proof cards from the Magic the Gathering uh, collecting arena. And the cards that I showed you in here, those artist proofs are really me just like dipping my toe into the world of artist proofs. You know, these ones. Uh, you can see in the back, indicative of the artist proofs. They're just white in the back, no sketching or anything on it. And I had mentioned that I guess the next step up uh, in terms of getting artist proofs is to get uh, the original artist of the card to do a sketch on the back of the artist proof itself. And I think this is what that is. Let's hope. <laughs> now this is a foil reprint of Dark Ritual, one of my favorite cards in the Magic the Gathering series. The artist of this is Clint Langley. And uh, I haven't... I don't know what's on the back of this. Basically when I bought this off the private artist proof Magic the Gathering website on Facebook, they just kind of said, yeah, here's a bunch of sketches on the back of these artist proofs. Each of them are, I honestly can't remember what amount of money they were, like 50 or 60 bucks American plus shipping to Canada. So whatever that turns out to be. And uh, you are about to experience with me the first time looking at this sketch on the back. I'm going to take my name off of there so you guys don't know my last name. So this is a sketch from uh, Clint Langley, the artist for this version of Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual is reprinted many times actually for Magic the Gathering. And this is one of my favorite versions or reprints of this card. I'm gonna put it in its own penny sleeve. T'Challa. And put it in its own... Oh yeah, look at that. The foiling on that is gorgeous. Gorgeous. And there you go. Very nice, actually. Like I said, to me, the money for this, the majority of it, I guess, went to uh, the artist himself. There's obviously a dealer here who takes his cut. You know, obviously the artist signature on the front and a sketch on the back. Zowie, wowie, I like it. I like it very much. Ooh, very nice. Yeah, all right, let's go finish this video. My first four artist proofs. Signed by the artist, and I'm very happy to add those to the collection. I think these, I don't know where the market will, will go if you're an investor in Magic the Gathering. I don't think uh, artist proofs will like be a sound investment, but like I said, I appreciate the art of Magic the Gathering. I want to support the artists, and to me, this is the next best way because like we don't get a lot of Magic the Gathering conventions up here, and really, that's the only way you get to meet these artists in person. We're never going to get that, so... I'm happy to do that. Anyways, not really Magic the Gathering related, but still, still cool AF. My kids and I really got into uh, Pokemon Go. And this is Detective Pikachu from uh, the Blu-ray, if you buy the Detective Pikachu Blu-ray. I bought it for my kids because we in COVID times. We need something to do in the house. I actually downloaded Pokemon Go just to, you know, mess around. And my kids really took a shining to the game. It got us out of the house, you know walking around as much as we can considering the times that we live in and Pokemon you know growing up meant something to me not like I wasn't a huge super fan of it but it was still a part of my development in my childhood and now I'm very thankful that there's something that I'm somewhat into I'm way more into it now than I was before but now my family and I share even my wife loves uh, Pokemon Go she plays it a lot as well and like I said uh, Magic the Gathering pickups, I don't think I'm going to be doing a lot more of these. Mainly because it's really expensive and you'll see why in a minute for this card over here. 
I should have said these four cards here cost me just under like $60 American shipped to my house. And I don't honestly remember the uh, how it broke down, but like this was the most expensive card. I think it was like 25 bucks. Anyways, Magic the Gathering Collecting is pricey, yes. And our family recently suffered a setback. I'll talk more about it like in a vlog or something. But uh, yeah, we had to put down our puppy, Gizmo. And it still hurts, you know. Pokemon Go is kind of just something I did to kind of fill in the void of those those times where you feel really, I don't know, sad and you miss them. It gives us something to do as a family. Anyways, the, the vet bill from, from that was really draining and really set us back a lot. So, like, a lot, all this stuff here that I purchased, I purchased before that whole thing went down with my puppy. So this is probably the last pickups you're going to see for a while for Magic the Gathering. This here I purchased... As a celebratory thing, I reached a milestone for my eBay store. Um, I'll just leave it at that. This one did cost a pretty penny. It was $100 on eBay. That was $100 shipped Canadian, I believe. And I wanted to, you know, save the unboxing of this. Oh shit, my address just got shown there. Envelope with an envelope. Thank you, sir, for double enveloping. You will get a good mark for that on eBay. Hopefully I blur that out on time here. <laughs> Another graded Magic the Gathering card. Now this is like my first modern Magic the Gathering card. It's a uh, foil box topper from Ultimate Masters. Caracas. In a way, I guess it is a vintage card, but reprinted for today's era. But I just think this card is striking. Just beautiful with that foiling. Oh, god damn. The ability is pretty good to return target legendary creature to its owner's hand. You could play that as an instant, you know, type thing. And just pop your legend. Pop it back to my hand. Caracas. Oh. Oh. You make me Caracas. So why am I buying PSA graded cards? Mainly because this is me just dipping my toe into the Magic the Gathering scene. I'm not an expert. I'm not great at grading cards. I'm not great at determining fakes and originals. So to me, this is just an extra layer of protection for myself. You do pay a premium for buying graded cards, obviously. But I just I feel, I feel that they look better. They're obviously protected. And, you know, all the grading and authentication is done for me. Kuyatanya is a little bit older now. He can afford pretty things in life. Even though I just said that I can't afford to buy any more Magic the Gathering cards. And this is probably my last Magic the Gathering pickup for a while. Oh, stunning though. Very happy to add that to the collection. I don't know what it is, but for some reason I just enjoy picking up these cards and looking at them and putting them back in this box. I'm not going full gung-ho like I was back in the day with Magic the Gathering. I'm not spending tons and tons of money on this. Um, I'm just kind of picking out key select cards that I just I want to have right I can't necessarily explain exactly why maybe part of it is I think there's resale value in the future for them but and it, you know it's impossible to predict what cards will go up in value what will not so the old adage is just to collect what you enjoy and collect what you love and like I said when I'm just kind of like chilling in the basement just relaxing after like a hard day's work I enjoy just kind of you know, looking through these and holding it in my hand and kind of reliving those memories. Look at that. So I guess you can check out the first uh, Magic the Gathering pickup video. This is episode number two. And like I said, I'm probably taking a break from this. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Sorry there's been a lack of content. Like I said, going through a transitional thing in my family here. And uh, don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and want to support Thrift Dweller. Leave some comments in the comments below if you have any questions. I would love to answer them in a future vlog response video type thing. Anyways, that's it for me, Nate. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.